gonna see my CPAP pose? <laughs>
50% of people that are on CPAP, I agree that they quit. Uh, they don't cite reasons why, but I do, by God. I've done it in several other videos, I'm gonna do it now. They don't get adequate education and they don't get adequate follow-up. Hey there, buddy. You wanna see my CPAP pose? <laughs> That's exactly what we do here at freecpepadvice.com. We try to give education and then we help people out on the forum where they can communicate with others as well as this video series. If that's not a reason to donate, I don't know what is. Why don't you pass that turkey gravy? <laughs> the people also have to be not significantly overweight and they actually have a metric. They said a BMI was not, I'm sorry, people were not tested that had a BMI, body mass index, over 32. And that's, yes, that's high, but that's actually, that isn't really all that high. The other caveat being you have to be 22 years of age or over. Another claim by Inspire Upper Airway Stimulation is that they say they are less invasive than a conventional obstructive sleep apnea surgery and that they are the only ones that preserve the natural airway anatomy. And I think I would actually agree with that as well. Let's take this time to go ahead and review the website. I'll make some comments through it um, and just try to explain kind of what this is. This is from the inspiresleep.com website. So how does Inspire Therapy work from their own website? Works inside your body with your natural breathing. Uh, continuously, continuously monitors your breathing and based on your own unique tech, your own unique breathing, it'll give you mild stimulation to keep airway open. That's basically it. Is it covered by insurance? This is one of those things you gotta check with your own insurance. How much you have to pay out of pocket? I don't know. Every insurance is different. Do I need approval for my insurance? Again, contact your insurance. Will Inspire Therapy help with snoring? So the clinical trial that they did, it did show that they had 85% of bed partners that said um, either no snoring or soft snoring was heard. So according to their data, it does in fact look like it helps with snoring. I should say that all snoring doesn't mean you have sleep apnea, but you know, snoring is annoying. So what does the stimulation feel like? Uh, they're going to say, this is what they say. You feel the mild sensation from the stimulation. Usually it's a tingling sensation, uh, the contraction of the tongue muscles. It's not painful or uncomfortable and the level is adjustable by your, your doctor. So that's what I said before. A TENS unit, if you've ever used therapeutic electronic or electrical nerve stimulation, like for sore muscles at phys the physical therapist, it's going to be the same type of feeling. You get that tingly feeling, and you do get used to it after a while. Now, um, I've never obviously had <laughs> Inspire or hypoglossal nerve stimulation, um, so I can't really speak to what it's like when you're actually trying to sleep, but to me it seems a little rough. How long will the battery last on the Inspire generator? They said 9 to, oh, I was wrong, 8 to 11 years. Um, they said it can't be recharged, so after it does die, you're going to have to have another uh, surgery to pop it out, replace the battery, possibly the whole unit, I don't know. Um, but anyway, they're saying that this is very common in people with implants. What does a surgical procedure involve? I can tell you what any surgical procedure involves. Yep, they put you out with general anesthetic, and then it's going to be about a week until you poop, and when you do finally poop, holy smoke, stop the presses, it feels like you're giving birth, although when I said that to my wife, she got pissed and said, no, you never know what it feels like to give birth. Never. But I'm like, hon, you've never had surgery like that before. And it got to a big fight. So pretty much what does it feel like? It feels like you're getting crap cut out of you and placed into you. What is the recovery time? Recovery time, patient to patient. You can expect swelling for a couple days. Then you'll be able to go home on the same day of your procedure. Some docs might want you to stay overnight. Um, you should be able to go back to non strenuous activities. Now, some things that it say you can't do, and I don't see where it says it. It doesn't say it in here. Oh, I think it's the next one. Basically, what it says is, as far as limiting your activities, you can't, like, lift over your head. So, un unpredictable range of motion in your upper body, uh, like things working as a firefighter. That kind of sucks. So, you know, I don't know. That seems like it's a wee bit limiting to me, which is why, in my own personal opinion, if I were like, all right, CPAP's done, I want to do something else, I would probably go with the maxillomandibular advancement as a surgery if I'm like done with CPAP. But again, that's up to you. And this is just something to look into. All righty. How often should my doc check on it? They usually say one or two times a year. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, are there medical imaging technologies that should be avoided? Yes, don't have an MRI. Why? It's going to rip it out. So once you have uh, Inspired Therapy, you should not undergo MRI. Um, it can harm the components of it, and it can also cause damage to the tissue. Why? Because the giant magnet around you is going to rip it through your skin. 
that's why. But you can still do stuff like the CT scan, ultrasound, and find out what is best for you. All right, now this is their, they call it the STAR clinical trial for their Inspire therapy. Um, you can see here, you can read about it. Um, it's actually in the For Healthcare Professional segment of their website, and it was published on January 9th, 2014 in the New England Journal of Medicine. So, uh, the long-term study shows that there was uh, a 78% reduction in apnea hypopnea events from baseline. Now, my question with this is always, what was the reduction in the A on the RDI though? The RDI includes respiratory effort related arousals and those wake you up just as much as an apnea or a hypopnea. So, man, I hate it when they leave those out. I understand why they do it, but it just really bugs me. Anyway, that said, there's also an 80% reduction in oxygen desaturations uh, events from baseline. Also good. Usually um, AHI and ODI trend pretty much the same. That's why oxygen desaturation index is actually a very good indicator of what the apnea hypopnea index is. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so this is what kind of bugs me. I had alluded this before. They said that they used a sampling of people with moderate to zero apnea that had a 20 to 65 apnea hypopnea index. Now, with a number of 126, it sure as hell looks like they skewed the crap out of this by having a lot of low number of people. So they probably had a bunch of people right around 20, just a ton of them, and then they threw in like, you know, like a baker's dozen of uh, people with a high AHI. Uh, it looks like they definitely skewed on the low side. So that is one question I have with this study. Um, that aside, it looks like after 12 months of hypoglossal nerve stimulation, it, the AHI decreased to 9, which is technically, it's, that's still diagnosable. Um, but I guess you have to look at the other side of this and say, well, these are people that are completely failing CPAP. They're completely failing CPAP is something better than nothing, and I would say, yes, something is better than nothing. So you may as well do this if you're absolutely not going to do CPAP or anything else. After 18 months, it actually went up. Now, it's kind of cool here, you can see, the people that started this study and then after 12 months, only two dropped out. And then after uh, 18 months, there was a total of five that dropped out. But then after 36 months, you can see the apnea hypopnea index dropped like crazy, still actually technically in the diagnosable range. Um, but a whole lot of people dropped out. And I'm almost wondering if that is where those real high number of people bailed because they're like, dude, this hypoglossal nerve stimulation just didn't work for me either. I don't know, just conjecture on my part. I don't have no facts to back that up. But clearly it does work on some level. Um, now you see pretty much the same trend in the oxygen desaturation uh, index. It's also going down and same, you can see the same thing at that 36-month uh, time frame. Okay, this is a little thingy they did, Con uh, confirmation of therapeutic effects. So they had people, they put them on it, it all dropped down. And then in some people that they were using uh, this therapy, they said, no more hypoglossal stimulation for you. And they took it away. They didn't turn it on. And after that, they're like, son of a bitch. These are the people that they, well, they were on it and they took it away from them and they're scores of feeling like crap came back. They felt like crap again after using it, so that validates that, yes, in fact, it was the Inspire hypoglossal nerve stimulation that is what caused the improvement. So some of my thoughts on it, that's the data. I actually like that they have data. They actually have several videos there that if you're interested in this, they're definitely worthwhile looking at. When you see the physicians talk about it, they don't make any false claims. They're not like, hey, it's gonna save the world for everyone. I mean, they're very upfront about it. Like, this is an option. If CPAP doesn't work, CPAP is a gold standard, but if you don't like it, try this. And they're super upfront about it, so I have absolutely no problems with that. So here's my thoughts on it. Again, I've already said this in the video. My thought is that I personally, I've had so many surgeries that um, anytime there's anything being implanted in your body, it's not a good idea, in my opinion. I would rather do something that doesn't implant things in my body. So that said, and then you know, there's things like you can't lift your arms, weightlifting. What happens if you get hit there by something hits it? Ugh, I don't like the I don't like the thought of that for myself, and so I share that that you know maybe you wouldn't like that thought as well. So for me, I think a better surgery is a maxillomandibular advancement. Ah, it's freaking disgusting. They break bones, they pull it forward, um, but long term, I mean, you're done with it. Yes, it changes your facial appearance. Now, people that have had it done, they say that that appearance change is usually for the better, makes them look rugged, 
or if you're a female, beautiful. Whatever it is, it just changes your appearance. It thrusts this part out a little more. And usually that's the problem is they have rectornathia where everything is set back in. And so when they have this surgery, it kind of pulls it forward and you look, I mean, it's according to studies, it's more visually appealing. Okay. It's not my opinion. It's science. Boom. Hey, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, I'm sorry. I'll try harder. Please visit my website. Donate, donate. I also have a Patreon. It is patreon.com forward slash free CPAP advice. I would appreciate your support monthly. Bring it Christmas. <laughs> <laughs>